Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Pure Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to Pure Accelerate. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman. This is Pure Accelerate. We're here at Pier 70. Brian McDaniel is here. He's an infrastructure architect at the Baylor College of Medicine. Not to be confused with Baylor University in Waco, Texas anymore. <laughs> Brian, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. You're very welcome. Tell us about the Baylor College of Medicine. So Baylor College of Medicine is a First and foremost, a teaching facility, but also uh, the leader in research and development for healthcare um, in, in the Texas Medical Center in Houston, Texas. Uh, we currently employ roughly 1,500 physicians, and so they, they occupy a multitude of institutions, um, not only at Baylor, but other uh, facilities and hospitals uh, in and around the Texas Medical Center. So, it's kind of healthcare morning here, Stu. Uh, we've been talking about electronic medical records, meaningful use, the Affordable Care Act, potential changes there, HIPAA, saving lives. I mean, Absolutely. these are big yeah. issues. We're, we're not at the HIMSS conference, Dave? Is yeah, that right. what you're we, telling we me? We should be at yeah. HIMSS. Right. So these are big issues for, for any organization in, in healthcare. It just exacerbates the challenges on IT. So I wonder if you could talk about some of the drivers in your business, compliance and in new tech, and. Maybe share with us sure. some of the things that you're seeing. Absolutely, so first and foremost, we are an epic uh, system shop, right? That's our EMR. Uh, so that, uh, from a enterprise and clinical operation, that is our number one mission critical application. So it provides your electronic medical records to our staff, regardless of where they're physically located at. So that alone is a demanding type of a uh, solution, if you will, the mobility aspect of it. Um, so delivering that in a uh, fast, uh, manner and a uh, repeatable manner is, is up most important to our physicians because they're actually seeing patients and getting to your records and being able to add notes and collaborate with, with other institutions if necessary. Uh, so time to market is very um, important and, and accessibility is also up there. Right, so, I mean, you mentioned that collaboration and, and part of that collaboration is so much data now being able to harness that data and, and share it. I mean, data explodes everywhere, but in healthcare, there's so much data to the extent we start instrumenting things. Right. Uh, what are you guys doing with all that data? Yeah, so, so right now, you know, it lives within the clinical ap um, ap application, right, okay. in Epic. Um, so, it, but as you pointed out, that is where the, the value is, right? That is where your, your crown jewels, so to speak, are at. So that data is now being looked at as a possible um, access point outside of the cl clinical operations. So its um, environment is going to be even more important going forward when you look to branch out into some of the basic science and more of a research uh, to, to gain access to that clinical data that historically has been problematic for the research to be done accessing the, that information. So in, in the corporate world, we like to think of from an IT perspective, you got to run the business, you got to grow the business, you got to transform the business. It's a little different in healthcare. You kind of got to comply. I mean, right. I mean, a lot of your time is spent on compliance and regulation changes and keeping up with that. And then there's got to be a fair amount that's at least attempting to do transformation and then kind of keeping up with the innovations. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Absolutely, so uh, particularly on the innovation side, uh, we work closely with our partners at Epic mm -hmm. and we, we work to uh, decide roadmaps and how that fits into the Baylor world. So case in point, a year ago, we were set to go to the new version of Epic, which was 2015. And Epic is nice enough to lay out requirements for you and say, here's what your system needs to uh, meet in order to comply with uh, Epic standards. So that they give you a seal of approval, so to speak. And there's monetary impl implications for not meeting those requirements. So it's actually dollars and cents. It's not just, we have to, we want you to meet this. Uh, if you do, then, then there, there's advantages uh, to meeting it. So they provided that to us and, and we d went through the normal testing phases and evaluations of our current platform, both from compute and storage. And honestly, we, we struggled to meet the requirements with our legacy systems. So the team was challenged to say, well, what can we do to meet this? 
right? We have our historical infrastructure, so if we're going to deviate from that, let's really deviate and look at what's available to the market. Um, so Flash comes to mind immediately, and so there's a multitude of vendors that make Flash storage products, so we started meeting with all of them, right? Doing our fact finding and our data gathering and meeting with all of them. Um, first and foremost, they have to be EPIC certified. That eliminated a couple of contenders right off the bat, right? You're not certified. I, I, I would expect some of the startups especially. It did, yeah. some, of, some of the smaller uh, flash vendors. Uh, when, uh, uh, for example, uh, one of them came in and we said, well, what do you do with Epic? And they said, what's Epic? And you kind of scratch your head thank and you say, playing. thank you, um, <laughs> here's the door. Uh, so, uh, you know, it eliminates people. But then when we meet with Pure, um, and we talk to them and we meet them and you get to really know the, the family and, and the, the culture that they bring with the technology, yes, it's going to be fast, but Flash is going to be fast. What else can you do? And that's where you start learning about how it was born on Flash, how it was native to Flash. And so you get added benefits to the infrastructure by looking at that type of technology, which ultimately led us there um, where, where we're at running Epic on our, on our Flash arrays. And, and Brian, you're using the Flash stack configuration of converged infrastructure. Right. It sounds like it was Pure that led you that way as well, opposed to Cisco. Um, Could you maybe walk us through that? That's yeah. very interesting. So we were, we were a UCS shop. We okay. were before Pure. So when Pure came in, the fact that they had a validated design with the Flash stack infrastructure yep. made it all that more easier to implement the pure solution because it just is modular enough to fit in with our current infrastructure. That made it very appealing that we didn't have to change or alter much. We just looked at the validated design that says, here's your reference architecture, how it applies to the flash stack. You already have UCS, we love it, we're a big fan, uh, and here's how to implement it. And it made the, the time to market to get production workloads on it very quick. Okay. And, and the CVD that you got from, from Cisco, that's Cisco plus Pure, but is it, was it healthcare or Epic specific, or was that the Pure had some, some knowledge for that that they told so, so that was one of the value adds that we feel Pure brought, was the Epic experience. And what, whether that's uh, scripting, the backups, and the, if you're familiar with Epic, the environmental refreshes that they have to go do, there's seven Epic environments, and they all have to refresh off of each other, and uh, play off of each other. So, so you have a window that you have to And hit, you right? do, right? Um, and historically that window's been quite large. Um, <laughs> and, and now not so much, which yeah. makes everybody happy. Uh, so, you know, their experience yeah, with Epic. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, our, our uh, DBAs attest to that, right? Yeah. So uh, we would like to think we've made their world and life a, a little bit yeah. more enjoyable, because those weekends now, they're not having to babysit um, the Epic refreshes, so. But, uh, back to the point of Epic Experience, that was um, instrumental in the decision makings from a support with the uh, Pure Storage Help Desk, awareness of, of what it takes to run Epic on Pure, uh, and then going forward, being uh, knowing that there's a partnership behind Epic and Pure and certainly Baylor College of Medicine as we continue to look at the next versions of Epic, whether that's 2018 and on to 2020, whatever that uh, decision is, we know that we have a a solid foundation now to grow. Yeah. And Brian, I'm curious, you've been a Cisco shop for a while. Cisco has lots of partnerships as well as, like they've got a hyper-converged offering that they sell right. themselves. What was your experience working with Cisco and do they just let you choose and you said, I want Pure and they're like, great, you know, uh, yeah, it, what was that like? So to your point, there, there's validated designs for, for many customers uh, and Cisco is kind of at the hub of that, that core with the compute and memory of the, of the uh, blade systems, right, the UCS. So, um, they, they like the fact that we went with Pure because it does mean a validated design. And they have others with other vendors. Um, the, the, the challenge there is how do they really integrate with each other from tools to uh, possibly automation down the road? And how do they truly integrate with each other? Because uh, we did bring in some of the, the other validated design architecture uh, organizations and um, I think we did our due diligence and, and looked at them to see how they differentiate between each other. And, and ultimately, we wanted something that was, was new and, and different approach to storage. It wasn't just layering your legacy OS on a bunch of flash drives and call it good. That's something that was natively born to take advantage of that technology, and that's what ultimately led us to Pure. 
Well, Pure has a point of view on the so-called hyperconverged space. You heard Scott Deason talking yep. this morning. What's your perspective <laughs> on, on Oh, I, so, so hyperconverged is one of those buzzwords um, that I think gets thrown out of there um, kind of uh, off the cuff, if you will. Uh -huh. People hear and get excited about it, but what type of workloads are you looking to take advantage of it? Is it, is it truly hyperconverged, or is it just something that you can say you're doing because it sounds cool? Um, I, I think to some degree people are led astray on, on, the, on the buzzwords of, of the technology where they get down to say, what's going to take advantage of it? What kind of application are you putting on it? Because if your application, in our case, can be written by a grad student 20 years ago that a lab is still using, does it make sense to put on hyperconverged? No, because it can't take advantage of the architecture and the design. So uh, in, in a lot of ways, um, we're waiting and seeing, and the reason we didn't go to a hyperconverged platform is A, epic support, and B, we are already changing enough to stay comfortable with the environment, knowing that come Monday morning, uh, doctors will be seeing patients, and we're already changing enough. That was another layer that we chose not to change. We went with a, with a standard UCS configuration that everyone, everyone was already happy with, so that, that made a, a significant difference from an operational perspective. I mean, essentially, you're your processes are tightly tied to Epic and the workflow associated with that. Right. So from an infrastructure perspective, it sounds like you just don't want it to be in the way. <laughs> we, we don't, and, and the last thing we want is infrastructure getting in the way. And quite frankly, um, it, it was in the way. Mm -hmm. Is Whether that was meeting latency requirements or IOPS requirements from the cache database or the Clarity database uh, within the Epic system, or if it was just, oh, things are just taking a little bit longer than they expect. Um, we, we, we don't want to be that bottleneck, if you will. We want them to be able to see patients faster, run reports faster, gain access to that valuable data in a much faster way to enable them to, to go about their business and, and, and not have to worry about infrastructure. Yeah. Brian, Pure said that they had, I believe it's like 25 new announcements uh, made this morning, a lot of software features. Curious, is there anything that jumped out at you that you've been waiting for, and anything still on your to-do list that you're hoping for Pure or Pure in its extended ecosystem to deliver for you? Yeah, uh, great question. So uh, at the top of that list is the, the replication of, of the arrays, uh, whether that's in an offsite data, data center or a colo, and how that applies to an epic environment that has to go through this flux of refreshes and from a disaster or business continuity standpoint, we're actively pursuing that and how that's going to fit with Baylor. So we're very excited to see what our current investment, free of charge by the way, once you do the upgrade to 5.0, is to take advantage of those features, with replication uh, being one of them. And, and then, I thought I heard today, third site as a service, right? So you don't have to install your own infrastructure. Right. So I'm yeah. not sure exactly what that's all about. I got to peel the onion on that. Yeah, we, you know, to be determined, right? Yeah. Uh, when we look at things like that, uh, particularly with uh, Epic, you know, we, we have to be careful because that is the HIPAA, PHI, that, that, that's your records, right? Yours, right. mine, uh, medical records, right? And you just don't want that. If I told you it's going to be hosted in, in a public cloud, you're, Wait a minute, yeah. uh, no, where? It's <laughs> no it's not. And we, we don't want to be on the 10 o'clock news, right? Yeah. Um, however, there's things like uh, SAP HANA and other uh, enterprise applications that we certainly could look at leveraging that technology. Right. Excellent, well listen, uh, thank you very much, Brian, for coming on theCUBE. No appreciate problem. your perspectives and sort of educating us a little bit on your business and your you know, industry anyway. And uh, have a great rest of the show. Yeah, thank you very much, You're appreciate welcome. it. All right, thank keep you. it right there, everybody. This is theCUBE, we're back live right after this short break from Pure Accelerate 2017. Right back.